Right, welcome to this tactics and showcase video for the Orcs. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Orc War Boss. Uh, so, the legendary War Boss I have for my Orcs is Gut Ripper, as he's been named. Uh, but we'll take a look at the entry here in the codex. So it'll be a showcase video as well. So we'll zoom in, take a look at the War Boss that I have. Uh, but we'll zoom in, uh, take a look at the model, and then we'll go through some tactics, loadouts, combinations. We'll cover things like stratagems, relics, warlord traits as well in this video, just to get the most out of what I think one of the uh, important units to have, uh, a very useful unit for sure, uh, the Orc War Boss. Uh, one of the really good units, I think, for the Orcs, and one that you can make very, very powerful indeed. So, here he is, Gut Ripper, here. I got into uh, collecting Orcs a couple of years ago, really, uh, Orcs were quite rare on YouTube to find bad reports of them. There was some around, but not particularly popular army. Uh, always liked the look of them. Developed a nice colour scheme for them and really wanted to make the Orcs uh, a, a popular army and to try and get them into bad reports on the channel. You know, the channel wouldn't be the same without the Orcs now. They're one of the classic factions now. And uh, the channel here wouldn't be the same without them. I'll zoom in here so you can take a look at Gut Ripper. So there he is. So I, <laughs> I really, I really like the model. Uh, one of my favourite Games Workshop models. Just a fantastic kit. This one here. Really, really good. So uh, it comes with the attack squig. Just here, this customised sh uh, shooter with the rockets. There's rules for that now as well. And then this power claw here. Stick grenades there at the back. It's like he's carrying two sawn off shotguns on his back, <laughs> by the looks of it. I never even really noticed that before, but he's, he's armed with those as well. But uh, really happy with this model, very happy to have him add as my. Oh, look, there's an Imperial Fist helmet just there. Just a chance to zoom in, take a closer look at these models here. Often zoomed out during battles, so in these tactics videos, you get a chance. Let's see a closer look, and then uh, it's a great paint, painting reference for you, just spinning the whole model around just to see how he's been painted up. If you like the way the orcs look here, then uh, check out the painting tutorial for orcs on the channel. Uh, that'll show you from start to finish how to paint orcs up in this exact colour scheme. And you just apply that technique to all of the orc units. In that video, I'll show you how to paint orc boys. Uh, then, for a, a bigger challenge on the plus channel, uh, you can uh, check out the in-depth painting tutorial for the Orcs. That's a bigger project, it's one of the Orc trucks, one of the vehicles, and uh, I'll show you how to paint that up from start to finish, all the techniques uh, used, and how to achieve results on the bigger Orc projects. And uh, I think it's a pretty effective technique here. It's not too slow, and uh, the results, uh, just like you see here on the screen, and obviously over on the Plus channel as well, there's a new Orc Army development video, and then plenty of Orc bad reports on there as well, as well as all of the other exclusive content. But uh, there he is, Gut Ripper. Now, he was all right in, in the index, he's okay, but now in the codex, <laughs> he's an absolute killer, which is good. I, I'm glad to see Orcs headed in that direction. Uh, the new codex has really done them some favours, but we'll take a look now in the index to see what, what you can do uh, with war bosses now. Alright, so just push Gut Ripper to the side there. Ouch. God, the uh, squig just bit me there. So, <laughs> uh, so, we'll look him up here in the codex. There's a good number of things that, are, that stack up now. So you've got your standard entry for the war boss, and then you stack up things and just gradually make the model better and better. Uh, and that way you can end up paying a small amount of points and then getting something that's really good. So uh, a war boss is 65 points to start off with. A very, very cheap HQ choice. Standard war boss. You get movement five, that's just the usual for orcs. The weapon skill is two plus, which is excellent. Ballistic skill five plus, just the usual for orcs. Strength six, which is really good. Toughness five, six wounds, loads of wounds. Four attacks, which is healthy enough. Leadership eight. And a four up saves, that's uh, useful as well. His armor's not too bad. So that's a decent stat line. And uh, then you have, uh, here we go. So when you're charging, 
You can reroll charge rolls for this unit. Uh, you can reroll all the dice or any combination of the dice. That is excellent. That really helps the orcs get into combat, uh, which is sort of the, one of the big aims of my orc army is, is close combat, getting stuck in uh, and bashing the opponents in, if possible. Now, uh, then he's got Daka Daka Daka, not particularly useful for him, just unmodified sixes to hit and uh, shooting, get extra shots. He's not really geared for shooting, that's just a, that's something I'm not worried about at all. Uh, it's more for close combat. Now, he comes with a combi weapon with rocket launcher, so that, that is gut, gut Ripper's configuration here. Combi weapon with rocket launcher, so when attacking this weapon, choose one or, or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, subtract one from the hit rolls. So if you go for the rocket launch, it's range 24, assault 1, strength 8, minus 2 and 3 damage. Decent enough. And what's great now, it's not one use only. So you can fire every turn if you wish. So a chance there to, to pick off some decent wounds, even against very tough targets like vehicles. Or you can go for the shooter, which is range 18, assault 2, strength 4, uh, AP 0, and 1 damage, which is alright. But uh, the rocket launcher is useful enough. Now that combi weapon with launcher is 12 points. I think it's alright to pay that. The model's cheap enough anyway, so quite happy to add that on. Uh, then uh, he comes with, this is the, the, the standard loadout here across the top, comes with a power claw. Power claws have come down, they were a lot more expensive, uh, but they're now 13 points. And y you want to go for a decent close combat option here. D definitely, you know, the war boss, this is what he's cut out to do. And the power claw, I think, is the best option. Times two strength, so you'll fight at strength 12. Uh, AP minus three, so you're gonna cut through a lot of the armor of vehicles. You know, average vehicle's gonna need six, so the uh, damage is usually gonna go through. D3 damage, which is okay. And then when attacking with this weapon, uh, it's minus one to the hit roll, so you'll still need three plus. So what you've got there is a standard war boss, pretty much at the index level, as good as what you got in the index. But now with the codex, you can start stacking stuff on top to make him better and better and better, and just gradually make something that's really good. Uh, you've got uh, Wa here, friendly, clan, whichever the clan you choose. Infantry units within six inches of this model. I do, I do plan to roll up some dice later just to illustrate uh, how this model can be used. Uh, infantry, clan infantry units within six inches of this model at the start of the charge phase can charge even if they advanced. So, it includes him, he can be influenced by his own bubble. So, for example, you're inside the transport, uh, he disembarks three, moves five, and then advances, and then he can still charge. That is an excellent bit of speed there from the orcs, can catch people out. Uh, so, on foot, you can go five, advance, and charge uh, into your target. So, uh, that's excellent. And what's really good is you can do it with other units following him in as well. It's very, very useful. There's nothing worse than getting your orcs just short of where they need to be and failing a charge. That's disastrous for the orcs. The opponents then got a chance to try and hose them down with firepower. You want to get into close combat as quickly as possible. You want to get in there as reliably as you can. So uh, adding on an advanced move can be the difference between a charge going ahead or not. For example, if he's not there, four inch move. And now it's a big stretch to try and reach in combat. Whereas now if he is there, he goes five and he advances, they go four, and on average they're gonna to get to about here. Now all of a sudden, their charge is a lot more doable. You combine that with re-rolling the charges, all of a sudden, thanks to his help and that uh, wire ability, it's much more likely a charge is gonna go ahead. So very, very useful. So you, you've got close combat units, it's useful to have them hang around with him. He's also breaking heads. If a clan infantry unit fails a morale test within three inches of a friendly war boss, the war boss, you've got to make sure your clans all match up. So if he's death skulls, they need to be death skulls and so on. Uh, the war boss can restore order with a brutal display of violence. If they do so, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, but the morale test is then considered to have been passed. So you say they found morale, two of them are going to run away and be lost. Instead, uh, he can roll up D3 mortal wounds. Say you score a mortal wound, it's just going to put a wound on there and the models don't flee. So that can be very useful. Uh, especially if you fail a morale test, you know, horrifically, really, really bad, then breaking heads uh, can be useful enough. 
So that's that's where he is. That's that's as he stands. I I think what I'm going to do right. I'm I'm going to roll up some dice now with him, and then I'm going to soup him up, and then we'll roll the dice again. <laughs> I think to illustrate what you can do. So standard war boss. Then we'll just remove those, and we'll get him to try and take on a character here. So this is just just standard points you've paid. You've paid about eighty odd points uh, here. Wall boss, 90 in total I pay. The attack squigs, uh, no charge. So 90 points in total. That's with the uh, combi weapon with the rocket launcher and the power claw. Uh, combine that with 65 points, is 90 points. So less than 100 points here, and you've got yourself uh, a character that's decent. Later on, he'll improve. So four attacks is what he gets. That's it. And then you get the squig. So it's say charges in. It's combat I'm thinking about here, we're not worried about the rocket. So he charges in here. So he'll need threes to hit because of the minus one of his claw. So one's found. Then he'll need twos to wound. He'll be wounded. Uh, minus three. Sixes to save. None. I think this lieutenant's dead. So he's decent enough. Uh, six wounds, yeah. So he's killed a lieutenant. He's done okay. We'll do another go. So four attacks. So he was always alright. Uh, well, yeah, this is the problem. He's missed that. Two's for a wound. Six for a save. D3 damage. Uh, two wounds this time. Lieutenant's not been killed. This is the danger. You charge them in, and it was not that amazing results. Here, look, see. Trouble. Two's to wound. Six is to save. And the damage is four, which I think Lieutenant is killed with. That. I think he's four wounds. Uh, if he's got five wounds and he's still alive, but again, we'll do one more. Threes, so this is a problem. This is the problem. This happened in games in the index. Got the one hit, got the wound, not saved, and three wounds, not enough to kill him. There's the attack squeak, which hits, which wounds, and saved. There's no minus on that, I don't think. Uh, it is minus one. No, that's the wound taken. Well done. A little squeak. So you sort of hit and miss there. We'll try uh, this one. You, you know, it's seventh edition. If he charged that, the vehicle's dead. Not some, not anymore in the index, or just as he comes in the codex. Not really. Um, fours. Uh, sorry, threes. So I missed that. Uh, threes. That's good. Six is to block. Nope. And 3d3, this is a really good result. Ah, oh, dear me. Three wounds. It's d3 damage, so just three wounds caused. The vehicle's nowhere near destroyed. Now you've got the squig there, which fails. Uh, we'll attack again. It will hit this time, which is good. Three's to wound. Six is to save. D3 damage. That's a very good roll. But even on a really good roll, Vehicle's not destroyed here, that's seven wounds. Do the squig. Faster wound. Seven wounds. And that would have been, that's a good round with this configuration. So the war boss is alright. But you wouldn't really fear him, I would say you wouldn't really be terrifying. So that's the kind of situation we're in just as he is, with none of the upgrades. But now along comes the codex. With all these little bonuses that you can add. So Build this guy. We'll, we'll just, I'll just cover these just to make sure we cover everything here. So this model may place its combi weapon with a rocket launcher, uh, with rocket launcher, with a weapon from the shooty weapons list. To see if there's any improvements there. You got combi weapon with rocket launcher. Uh, you got the scorcher, which is just a heavy flamer. We well, got the custom shooter. No major improvement there. I, I stick with the rocket launcher. That's what the model had. You can then go. Uh, you can replace the power claw with a big chopper. The big chopper, it's cheaper, it's five points. We'll give him plus two strength, so we'll fight at strength eight. It's only minus one though, and it's only two damage. So yeah, not bad on, on a knob, for example, a new unit of all boys, but for your war boss, uh, unless you're stretched for points, it's uh, not that scary. A weapon. 
So unless you take the relic, there is a relic where you can make it better, but uh, that's your options there. And then you can take the attack squig that's free of charge. Uh, there's no points cost for that, it's just an extra bonus attack. There, strength four, uh, minus one, one damage each time. Oh, each time you fight you get two additional attacks. All right, so you get two attacks for that. Anyway, that's as he stands. So we'll say we keep the configuration that you see here. So keeping this power clock. I'm going to add in all of the bonuses here and then you'll, you'll see the different kind of results that you can get. So, the first is clan cultures. Uh, I know a lot of people are experimenting with these. The ones that I, I'm going for at the moment is uh, goths, which is no mucking about. Each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of six for an attack with a melee weapon made by a model with this culture, immediately make an additional hit roll against the same target using the same weapon. These additional hit rolls cannot generate further hits. So if he gets any sixes when he rolls up uh, and fights in close combat, he'll generate extra attacks. It gives him a few more attacks sometimes, and that can be enough. So instead of causing seven damage, it can be enough to tip the scales and actually destroy the vehicle. So that is useful. Sometimes you're charging, you roll four dice, you get two sixes, and all of a sudden he's got six attacks instead of four. So that's useful. So there's stratagems, I'll come to those in a moment. We'll come back to those, just trying to, to build first of all on this character. So you've got some nice shiny gubbins here. All sorts of options available. Uh, the one that I go for, the one I'll mention first of all is the lucky stick. It's the goth model only, which is the clan that I'm using. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by friendly goth character models whilst there is six. He's gonna benefit from his own bubble. So instead of threes to hit with the claw, he'll be on back to twos to hit again. Very useful. In addition, you roll hit and wound rolls for attacks made by the bear in the fight phase all of a sudden. Very, very reliable indeed in close combat, getting those hits, getting those wounds. So that is excellent. The lucky stick is fantastic. But I, I use that um, on this guy here in my list. And that's the Orc War Boss on the bike. This is the Forge World model here and I give him the lucky stick. So now he's on twos to hit with his claw, re-rolling his hits, re-rolling his wounds. And that just gives that character the edge. And he's goths as well, so only sixes to hit his extra attacks. That makes him, makes him nasty. Sure, but uh, the one I go for is that uh, this Hebopper's Kill Chopper, by the way, that's the, the, uh, the boosted up big chopper. You're on plus two strength, even minus two. Two damage, and his six is to wound, is two more to wound instead of the normal damage. It's all right, but it's still not as powerful as the, can, uh, the killer claw, um, well, the power claw. But I take this one here, the killer claw. It's just like it was made for Gut Ripper, this one. So, model with a power claw only. The killer claw replaces the bearer's power claw, it has the following profile. So, times two strength, that's the same. A for minus three is the same, but the damage is three. There's no D3 damage, it's guaranteed three damage every time. That's excellent. Then you have, you can reroll wound rolls for attacks made by this weapon. That is superb. Re ability to reroll wounds. And then, there's no minus here to your hit rolls. So you're going back to your twos to hit. So there's a triple bonus here. You go back to twos to hit, rerolling your wounds, and your damage is maxed out to three for that. And that one relic, that is, you know, compared to some of the other relics other factions have, that relic is so powerful. It really is good. So remember that combination for 90 points, now you're getting a, a deadly character here, and you're not paying extra for it, you're just using relics which are free of charge. It gets better. You can go to Warlord Traits. A lot of these are really, really good. But the one that I go for is, you see like, here you got a uh, big killer boss, add one to your wound rolls for attacks against the vehicle monster. I'm on re-rolling wounds anyway, so don't bother with that one. And I take this one here, brutal but kind. Your warlord can re-roll hit rolls in the fight phase. So you're re-rolling wounds, and you're on twos to hit, but now those to hit rolls are re-rollable. So you're on twos to hit rolling ones, you're gonna get your hits now, plus your bonuses for being goths. In addition, you add one to the damage characteristic of your warlord's melee weapon. If in the same turn they finish to charge, move, were charged, or formed a heroic intervention. So you've got to remember it's only for the time that you charge. But when he charges in, the killer claw isn't damage three, it's damage 
four, and that is horrific. So if you start to stack all of those bonuses up, you turn a 90 point character from average up to excellent, and it's not cost you any extra, just by stacking up those combos to make him really good. And I'm really excited about that, it's great to see Gut Ripper turning into uh, the awesome character that he should be. So with all those extras in mind, we'll stack them all up and then we'll let him have a fresh attempt here <laughs> at these models. So the Lieutenant, now charging in, he should be reliable enough just to take this guy out. So in he goes. So not threes to hit, I'm on twos to hit, re-rolling ones. So they've all hit. Because I'm goffs, I've got myself an extra attack. It's missed, but it's re-rollable. So now I've got myself five hits. I'll be on twos to wound, and I don't need to re-roll them. It's minus three, it's sixes to save. He's saved one, but I've actually caused <laughs> 16 wounds. <laughs> 16 wounds. So that's for how many three lieutenants <laughs> brought down by Cut Ripper. Oh boy, I can't wait to see him. Uh, I'm not going to bother rolling anymore. That is utterly ridiculous. In fact, let's just chuck him in against this squad here. Might as well let him practice here. So in he goes. We'll chuck him in. So uh, four attacks. So yeah, this is this is dream world roll. It happens. Got myself two sixes. So not only have we got four hits, generated two extra attacks. That's re-rollable. So now I've got myself six hits. <laughs> Two's to wound. Oh dear, six is to save. No, he's wiped out the squad. Oh dear. I think if he's four wounds, he would have killed a lieutenant as well. Uh, that's the equivalent damage that he's done. That is something to be feared. A 90 point model has just wiped out a unit Primaris Marines. That is absolutely terrifying. So, well done, Rip up. Good for you. All I can say. This one, for Rhino, we'll charge in. Uh, Rolling to hit. It looks terrible, but we've actually got hits there, so that's fine. Three to wound. Re rollable. Still failed. Uh, six is to save. Did save one, but two wounds we got through. If that was uh, your regular power claw, you'd be looking at two wounds. Because it's the upgraded the killer claw with all the other things stacked on top, that's actually eight wounds. Even on a bad below average roll we almost destroyed the rhino. Uh, we'll have another go. So we're freshly charged in. Yeah the, the squig might have finished it off. Look at that. So I had in the index disaster, you know, it terrible and you think oh I know this is an awful situation. But thanks to all the upgrades we'll re-roll those. And we turn it into four hits. Threes to wound. Again, disaster, but it's re-rollable because of the killer claw. We've turned disaster into a decent result. Six is to save. No, and we've actually caused 12 wounds. The vehicle's been destroyed. So that was a pretty, pretty poor roll. We'll do one more. Just to illustrate. Four hit. Again, a bad roll, which would have been disastrous in the index. We've turned it into success. Not saved on a triple one, and again, 12 damage, vehicle destroyed. So he used to do that kind of damage in 7th in edition, and now he's back to kicking out that kind of damage, and for charging in, taking out a vehicle by himself, he used to be able to do it, dwindled away in 8th eighth, eighth edition with the index, and now he's back to uh, being a killer again. So exciting stuff. And that's cost us no extra upgrades for that war boss. We've just taken the, uh, the, the st standard loadout, and then just added some enhancements on top. I like the Goff's bonus there, especially if you're charging in against a, a big target, a couple of sixes, and getting those bonus attacks really, really helps out and amplifies him. You know, he's got the potential to... Uh, the potential to... take out a... 16, 32, 12, 24... Yeah, the potential causing a, a whole lot of wounds. Loads and loads of wounds, so... <laughs> it's a scary, scary prospect, and that's how it should be for orcs. They should be feared in close combat, so it's exciting stuff. If you might not have been aware of all those things you can stack up, just means you can turn something that's average into something that's terrifying. But it gets better here, Warlord. 
Yeah, so you've got things like boarding action here if he's inside a transport and the, ve the vehicle's at the end of the fight phase, it's still fighting in close combat against the target. Say the, uh, the battle wagon here is charged into these Primaris Marines. He's currently inside. He can attack from inside uh, against these with one attack. So boarding action is pretty useful. And uh, yeah, Orcs is never beaten. Two command points, use a stratum and orc character model from your army slain. Let's say um, Gilliman's gone first in close combat against Gut Ripper. Uh, Gut Ripper's been slain, you know, there's no, no chance. You play this one here. Uh, this model is not removed from the battlefield as normal. You can immediately either shoot as if it were the shooting phase or fight as if it were the fight phase. And then the slain model's removed, so you, <laughs> you get to you get to fight. What's quirky about this is you could charge in, do your attacks and cause damage. The opponent fights back and kills you, and you play this card and fight again. <laughs> That's scary. I tell you, it's pretty scary. The potential here of just a 90-point model. Uh, so there's that one. I think technically you can do that. Yeah. Uh, if you see others that I've missed, then by all means leave it in the comment section and see what other experienced orc players are saying. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's back here, I missed it. Get stuck in, lads. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when it's your turn to select a unit to fight. Or at the end of the fight phase, select an orc infantry unit from your army that has already fought once this fight phase to fight a second time. Um, I'm just... I'm just thinking of the ultimate combo here. I, I don't know if you can do this. Uh, check the comment section to see if others agree. Yeah. Yeah, okay, right, so how about this? Let's say he charges in. This is sort of the <laughs> potential ultimate combo. Let's say he charges in and he does his attacks. So that's that bit. He then play Get Stuck In Lads and then he fights again <laughs> for another time. Then someone else attacks him and he dies. And then you could play the Orcs is never beaten and then he attacks again. Can you do that? Because <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah, I have to remember this because uh, that's crazy. So uh, that's a scary combination there. I'm not sure if you can stack them up like that. But if you can, I can't see why not. No, I can't see why not. You fight. Pay the points, fight again. You're slain. It's all in the same turn during the fight phase. You're slain, lay him down. Uh, and then fight again before removing the model. So he got absolutely nuts amongst the opponent's uh, force there, uh, just hacking a load of stuff down before he's removed. So some amazing combinations here. So what we've seen is a load of stacked up bonuses and access to some horrific stratagems as well for the Orcs. So exciting stuff, I think, uh, for the Orc Warboss, uh, for sure. So. I still use uh, the war boss on the bike. You can't get that anymore in the in, in the codex, but it's still available from the index. You are still able to draw units from the index for the orcs, uh, and so I think you can use the uh, the points of the model from the index, and then you are allowed, I believe, to take then take your war gear and your warlord traits and relics from the codex and add them on top. So I, I still like to use him. I mean, that's the model from Forge World, and uh, break my heart not to include him in the army, so I'm going to draw him from the index. I think Games are actually just tightening up using only their plastic range inside here. So some of the older models you'll have to go to the index for them. Uh, but that's the video there for the war boss. Just dwelt on that one, spent a bit of time, but there's so many little things you can add on uh, to try and make him better and just to try and help all players out so you can develop an army uh, that's stronger uh, now with the new codex. But check the comments section below, see what combinations and what tactics other Orc players are using, especially now with the New York Codex. Uh, and then keep a lookout for more tactics videos for the Orcs. Uh, the final army to arrive on the channel when it's done, and then battle reports uh, on both of the channels. So uh, keep a lookout for that as well. And uh, if you want to see more Orc content, then check out the Plus channel. Uh, link in the description of the video below or at strikingscorpion82plus.vhx.tv. There it is, that's the war boss. 
uh, tactics and showcase video for Orcs. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.